Go give him praise. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Come on, now it's time to jump. <laughs> jump for joy, right? At least move your feet. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. <laughs> yes, Lord. Glory. It's a new level. Glory. 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 It is supernatural. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Come on, give the Lord a shout of praise. Let the Lord know you know you got the victory tonight in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. It's the highest praise, right? I, at least I have not heard that there was any. Has anybody heard? <laughs> it's the highest praise. So let's shout hallelujah three times. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Out there, come on. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory be to God. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. We shout with a voice of triumph because we know that we have the victory tonight in Jesus' name. So as we have come to Bible study tonight, Father God, we're studying to show ourselves approved unto you, workmen that need not be ashamed, but learning how to rightly divide your word of truth. For it is the truth of the word that we know that continuously sets and keeps us free. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. Thank you for the blood that ever cries mercy. Thank you for your angels that are encamped around about us and have gotten us here safely tonight in the name of Jesus. We bless you. We glorify you in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. amen. Look around at three people and then take your seats. Let's wave at three people and take your seat. Amen. Praise be to God. Aren't you glad you've seen the downfall of Satan in your life? And I say it all the time because you really do need to see it so we don't give him credit because he's a defeated foe. How many know that? Because we dwell in the secret place of the Most High and we abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And we say of the Lord, he's our, he's our, who does he belong to? Say me, he's my God. It's personal. He's my God. I will say of the Lord. Yes. So you can say what you need to say. Amen. Amen. Praise be to God. Tonight we're going to um, continue on with what Apostle Rock is not going to come in out the same way that he said it, but don't park there. Don't park here. No parking. And tonight we just want to continue talking about um, how we're supposed to park, where we're supposed to park. All those things. And we're going to come um, from Romans chapter 12, and probably that's where we'll be tonight. And, you know, of course, if the Holy Spirit says something else, we're going to be obedient to what, the, to what the Holy Spirit says. But Romans 12 is where we're coming from, and we're coming from the Amplified Translation. Um, because the reason that people park in wrong spots is because they haven't. I can't hear you. That's exactly right. Because you haven't, they haven't renewed their mind. Because if you renew your mind, you already know not to park in a fire hydrant, right? In the natural. You know, you got to know how to think in the natural as well as the spirit. And so, and when you go to the hospital to see someone, you don't park where they say clergy. Because if you do, what's going to happen? They're going to say something to you, say, you know, this time we're going to give you a warning. And even, this is the thing, now this is the thing you need to know. Even if you're clergy, if your name is not in there, you still can't park there. So look at somebody and say, you can't park there. You can't park there. Yeah, so it doesn't, it doesn't matter because you're a clergy. All clergy's names are not at the hospital that you might be at. You might be in California. And, well, I'm a clergy and I don't have to do all that walking. You can't park there. They don't know who you are, and you don't have to go to California. You marry Washington. If your name is not there, if you're not one of the clergy that they use, you can't park there. I'm not one of them, so I'm clergy, but you know what? Say, you can't park there. <laughs> no. And so we need to know that. And so 
If we naturally know that there are things that we cannot do, there are signs that are out there. I think I learned from Nani that she just got her driver's license. Yay! Yay. But I learned from her is that when you take the driver's test, you can't miss a sign. Because if you miss a sign, you're not even going to get to take the rest of the test. And I said, what? She said, yeah, the signs are their first grandma. And if you, if you miss the sign, a sign, you don't know what's going to be on the rest of the test. Because, see, it's not like that with real estate, is it? With real estate, you get to take the whole test and they tell you that you haven't passed it. <laughs> right? As many times as you like. But you can take the whole test. And then let you, but you, you take the whole test, and by the time you get to the end, you think you may have passed, but they're going to let you know whether you've passed. Isn't that right? Yes, I know what I'm talking about. But, but when it comes to the driving test, guess what? I'm going somewhere. When it comes to the driving test, they put the signs there first because there's safety. Because if you don't know how to be safe on the road, you might miss 10 signs and not get any of the others wrong. But if you miss the safety part of the test, you don't know the signs, you get on the road, you don't know that that's a stop sign, then you're not going to be, and you don't know that that means yield. You don't know what the red light means. You think the red is go and the green is stop. Um, stop. You understand what I'm saying? You've got to know the signs. And so if you don't know the signs, you don't even get to take the rest of the test. You can't not, zero, I told you, zero. You cannot miss a sign. How does she know that? Because the first time she took the test, she missed a But when the second time came around, she did not miss any signs. And so that's how she knew that you can't miss a sign because you don't even get to take the rest of the test that you probably know really well. But if they know that if you get the signs right, you're going to be all right. They, you can miss a few then. <laughs> you don't have to have 100, but as long as you get those signs, they say you've studied the signs, you know what to look out for on the road. Well, it's no difference in the word. Turn to Romans. Turn to Romans chapter 12. We have, you know, looked at that so many years. And usually when I teach, when I used to teach in Romans, I always went to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. I think it was 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 4, where it says, for, though we, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but what? Mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that what exalts itself against the knowledge of God bring it into captivity you got to capture every thought and bring it to the obedience of what you know to be right about the word of God amen, amen. and that's what it's all about that's a sign too is that's a big sign and so when when you let's go to Romans chapter 12 you, you guys there yet smartphones get you there quick you know, used to we hear pages turning and you have to wait for people to get there, but you don't have to wait anymore because as soon as you say it, you're there almost. Right? But Romans chapter 12, Amplified Translation. Look at what the Apostle Paul said. And you know, because Apostle Rock said, don't park there. Don't look at your neighbor and say, don't park there. He says, I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, and beg of you in view of all the mercies of God to make a decisive dedication of your bodies. In other words, decide, choose. Say, I'm going to what? Present my body. Right, that, that we know that, um, yeah, that's because I don't know this one to quote from the heart, um, from memory, I should say, but I live it from the heart even though I didn't, don't know how to quote it from the heart because I do my best, and I believe you do too, to live according to the word of God. He says, by all, but notice, it, notice in parentheses, there is all the mercies of God. And to make a decisive decision of your bodies, presenting all your members and faculties as a living what? Sacrifice, holy, 
And look at what it says, devoted. How many of you know faith comes by hearing? So the word of God tonight, just reading the word will give you faith, amen? And you will get knowledge, amen? You won't lean to your own understanding, but you'll trust in the Lord. So he says, as a living sacrifice, holy, devoted, consecrated, and well-pleasing to God. So that tells us that a body that's sacrificed, a living sacrifice, that's holy, that's living the word of God, that is well-pleasing to God, right? So we see that that's well-pleasing to God. And then he tells us, you know, I'm paraphrasing, that's the least that you can do for all the things that God has done for you. He said, which is your what? Reasonable, that's rational, that's intelligent service and spiritual worship. Because when you present your bodies as a living sacrifice unto the Lord, you're going to do something with that body. When you say praise the Lord, what are you going to do? You're going to hallelujah. You're going to say glory to God because your body is a what? Living sacrifice. And when you begin, even as I'm teaching, when you say hallelujah, it keeps the atmosphere fresh and wet and moist with the presence of the Lord because you're saying hallelujah. Everybody might not say it at the same time. I'm calming down. Everybody might not say it at the same time. I'm not going to be as animated as I was last week. I'm going to try not to be, but that's a part of my anointing. It really is. Because, I, you know, I say I'm not going to do this, but then I forget all about it because I let the Holy Spirit have his way. way. Hey, he's the way maker, right? And so, so when, he, when, you, when you begin to, when, when the word is going forth, and you say hallelujah, that's, that, you're wetting the atmosphere. You're causing the atmosphere to be moist with the presence of the Lord. But if nobody's saying anything, the atmosphere is... <laughs> right? <laughs> So we're not dry Christians, are we? We're moist. We're wet. The washing of the word, water, the washing of water with the word, the word keeps us moist. It keeps us wet. Remember the Bible says in John, out of your belly flows rivers. So if anything is in your way, that water going to get them out of your way. I mean, the water, the, out of your belly flows rivers of living water, and that living water will get rid of anything that's in your way. It'll drown it if it needs to. Because it's flowing out of you. It'll get it out of your way. Because it's living water. Amen? Amen. So, so he says, that's the least that you can do. That's rational. That's intelligent. That's an intelligent service, service and a spiritual worship. So we realize that it's intelligent to praise the Lord. It's intelligent to present our bodies as living sacrifice. That's the rational, that's the reasonable thing that we can do. Amen? Amen. That's what we need to do. Yes. And so, and he says, do not. Look at your neighbor and say, do not park there. Do not park in the world. Let's do it like that. He said, do not be conformed to this world. What is this world? I can't hear you. The earth, this world, the outside surrounded. Do not, conf do not be conformed to this world of this age, fashioned after and adapted to its external superficial customs. And superficial means that you're only concerned with the obvious or the apparent. You don't even think about your eternal salvation. You don't think about it because it's just superficial. It's just shallow. And you know the apostle already tells us all the time to do what? Dig. You got it. Now you can park there. Because dig deeper means you're going to continuously be what? Digging deeper. So you don't want to be a shallow Christian. You want to dig deeper, amen? And you can park there. You don't want just an appearance without substance or significance. You know, there are some people that's just a bunch of hot air. You don't want to be a bunch of hot air. You want to be the real deal, amen? Look at your neighbor and say, I want to be the real deal. Say, so as a matter of fact, I am the real deal. Hey, glory be to God, because the greater one, what, lives on the inside of you, and greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So do not be conformed to this world, fashioned after and adapted to its external superficial customs. But what does it tell you to do? Be ye, what, transformed. And that word transformed means you got to what? 
change. Because change is not change until you change. You can talk about change. You can pray about change. You can fast about change. But change is not change until you change. We need to keep that in mind. Isn't that right? You know, you can say, uh, let, let me use something. You can be laying in the bed and say, I know I need to get up. I just know I need to get up. But until you get up, you're not up. You can lay in the bed and talk about getting up all you want to. I know I need to get up. I'm going to get up in a minute. I know I need to do this when I get up. But until you get up, nothing happens. But when you get up, you are what? Up. <laughs> right? Yeah. So he said, don't be conformed. Don't be fashioned after and, and be adopted. At, but be ye transformed. In other words, he said, changed by the what? Entire. Because I'm reading in parenthesis too. By the entire renewal of your mind. Romans 12, Amplified Translation. Uh, be uh, your in, the entire renewal of your mind by its new. Remember, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a what? New creature. Old things are what? Passed away. Behold, look, see, all things have become new. So you can see where it says that, but be transformed and changed by the entire renewal of your mind. Don't worry about somebody else's mind. Renew your mind. Because you can't renew nobody else's mind. You can't get nobody else saved. You can present Jesus, but it's up to them to accept him. You can pray the prayer with them, but they still have to agree with it. You, they got to confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in their heart, not your, not what you believe. They got to believe in their heart that God raised him from the dead. And when they believe that and they confess that, the Bible says they are saved for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But until that happens, they're not saved. You can talk to them about it. You can put their name in the bucket. But until they come to the place that the Holy Spirit convicts them of sin, righteousness, and judgment, there will be no change. Amen? Amen. Amen. They got to want him. They got to want Jesus. And if they don't want him, guess what? It's up to them. That's why it's important for us to live right. No matter what people do, no matter what people say, you got to have a renewed mind. You got to be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can prove. So I'm going to prove to them. And you're not proving to them because you're saying something. You're proving it to them because you're walking something. You're walking like Jesus walked. You're talking like Jesus talked. You know that Jesus says, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. So you begin to walk and you begin to draw people unto the Lord that did not even know what is going on but they know it's something about you that they don't see in that person over there they know it's something about you and that something is Jesus amen that something is the Holy Ghost that's stirring you amen so we've got to know that we got to be real about this life that we live in for Jesus we can't be no phony baloney we got to be real. We got to be renewed in our thinking. We got to be transformed in our mind. Because if we don't, people are going to be left here and they're not going to know who Jesus is. Amen? We want people to know who Jesus is. We want them to know who lives big on the inside of us. We're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Are you ashamed of Jesus? The apostle Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Neither am I. I don't mind if somebody says she radical for Jesus, because I am. I don't mind if they say she acting like a fool for Jesus, because I am acting like I'm going to act just like David. They thought, what? they thought David was crazy. But David said, no matter what you do to me, I'm going to praise the Lord. I'm going to give the Lord glory. I'm going to shout the name of victory in Jesus. Mm -mm. You got to know who you are and whose you are, and you will never know that to its fullest extent until you renew your mind. Be transformed. You think about it. When I used to teach on renewing the mind years ago, I always used the illustration of a caterpillar and a butterfly. Nobody wants to pick up a butter, I mean a caterpillar. What do you do with caterpillars? Step on them or get some spray. Shh. Get them out of the way. They're in the cocoon. What do you do? Knock that thing down because they suck the life out of everything that's around it. The tree is dead if you leave that there. But when it transforms to a butterfly, you want to catch it with a net. 
And you think about a butterfly, they come in all colors. Beautiful, just like we are. We're beautiful in the sight of God because we're the apple of his eye. And so it's really, really important that we be transformed by the renewing of our minds. That's how the King James says it. So we can prove, so you can prove to people, I don't care what you say to me, I'm not going to get in the flesh. Because I've learned my mind has been renewed. The flesh don't profit nothing. It's the spirit that quickens, that makes alive. So I'm just going to be alive for Jesus. I'm going to be just like Jesus. When they hung him, he said, Father, forgive them. For they don't know what they're doing. And you've got to come to that place. You've got to renew your mind and transform your thinking. That when people try to say ugly stuff to you and about you, you've got to say, Father, forgive them. I've did that so many times because they don't know they're talking about your child. They don't know that we love you. They don't know that we serve you. They don't know that we're the apple of your eye because if they knew it, they wouldn't be saying negative stuff and ugly stuff. And all of us can say that when you're living, when you have a transformed life. So I say, my example is Jesus. And when he hung on that cross, they spit on him. They did all kinds of things to him, stripped him. And, say, and then say, okay, who are you? You say you're the son of God? He went through all of that. He went through, he took our shame, all of that. And so, but he did not say, okay, this is going to happen. And, and, and what Herod, was it Herod or Pilate that said, do you know who I am? I'm paraphrasing. Pilate, you, do, you, you standing there and not respond because, you know, he was mad because silence couldn't be misquoted. And he was mad because Jesus wasn't saying anything. And he said, do you, 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 you don't know who I am. <laughs> he said, That's it. He said, no, you don't know who I am. He said, I got the power to do this. He says, if I wanted to, paraphrasing, my father would send these angels, tons of them, and they would whip your butts. But because looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him. I said Hebrews, I think it's 12 too, because he said, you know what? I look, I see these people in the palms of my hand. I see Ella in the palm of my hand. I see Teresa, I see Lynette, I see all of you in here. You're, you're, you're there in the palm. So I'm looking at them and I said, I can see because I know what they're gonna be doing down the road. They're gonna be living for me. They're gonna be serving me. And for that, I get my strength. I get my joy. He said, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. He endured it. He didn't, he didn't just say, you know, Lord, this is just too much, Father. I'm coming down from here. Uh -uh. They, they don't gone too far. They're spitting on me. They're beating me. You can see the daylight through me. No, this is too much. He says, no, I'm going to stay here and take it. And then at the end, he said, Father, forgive them. That's the kind of power that we have on the inside of us. We don't have to explode. We don't have to do any of that because we're supposed to walk in love, joy, peace. Faith, hope, love. L let me tell you something I wrote down that maybe don't have anything to do with this, but it really does. When you're thinking about who we are in Jesus and renewing our minds and all that, let me, let me read a little bit further first. Do not be conformed to this world. Let me see where I'm. What is a good? Thank you, Holy Ghost. He reminded me of what he said to me. What is a good, acceptable, and perfect will of God? God works in threes. We've learned that through the years, have we not? And you see it. Faith, hope, love. You know, we say love, joy, peace. Now you see the good, acceptable, and perfect. And we're striving to be mature. But what is, what is going on is that so many of God's children, you're born again, but you're staying in the good. You haven't even gotten to the acceptable. And so if you haven't gotten to the acceptable, you're certainly not going to be in the perfect. And the reason is contamination and revelation can't live in the same house. They just can't. So how are you going to renew your mind on anything when you're contaminated? in your thinking. And if you're contaminated in your thinking, you're going to be contaminated in your faith. Because faith works by... Right? They can't live in the same house. So we have got to be like Jesus. He said, 
Because you can't teach anything without putting Jesus in it. If you love Jesus. How many love Jesus in the house? Hey, glory. Give the Lord a praise. Yeah, because you love him. Contamination and revelation can't live in the same house. They just can't. They just don't. And so some people have not gotten you. All you are is born again. You don't know what the good will of God. You, only, you, you, have, you, got, you got to the good because that's the first one. But you're stuck there. And I'm just telling you why you're stuck. And as we continuously read, you'll, you'll see exactly what I'm saying when I say that. You've parked where you shouldn't be parking. You know, even as we have the, the things that we do here, and we have parents that you can read the Apostle Rock, I mean, or Apostles, where we park. And people will come and park. You, they don't even obey the natural. So you know when a person does that, you already, don't you judge, you already, I don't have to, you already can see. You don't even have respect for the, for the signs, because that's a sign. Handicap. If you don't have a handicap sticker, maybe it's not in your windshield, but if I come to you or somebody come to you, you should be able to say, you know what, I took this down, here it is. Not, ain't nobody here, nobody's here. We get that too. You would be amazed. Am I right, Pastor Nome? Yes. People don't have respect, so they, that don't mean they're not born again, but they haven't renewed their minds. And you can't renew your mind to the spiritual things if you haven't renewed it to the... Because it's always first the, then the spiritual. So that means when you get out there, you're not going to obey. You're not obeying the laws of the land. Right? So, and then the next verse says, For by the grace, unmerited favor of God given to me. And look at what Paul said. I warn everyone among you. That means everybody that's here tonight, everybody that's listening on that live stream now and will be listening later, he says, I for, for by the grace, the unmerited favor of God given to me, that ability, that strength, that anointing that God gave to me, he said, I warn everyone among you not to estimate and think of himself more highly than he ought to, not to have an exaggerated opinion of your own importance, but to rate his ability, look at this. Now, this is important. But to rate, in other words, given to me, I want everyone among you not to estimate himself and think of himself more highly than the ought, not to have an exaggerated opinion of his own importance, but to rate his ability with sober judgment, each according to the degree of faith apportioned by God to him. Now, you know there are people that are in this ministry and out there that don't realize how wise Apostle Rock is. Because he will walk and be plain among you. You don't even realize what you have in front of you. So you think you know more. I'm here to tell you that you don't. Even out there, you don't. How many know what I'm talking about? He makes decisions you think they're not right. It's right here. Not to have an exaggerated opinion of your own importance. Well, that means you got an exaggerated opinion of your own importance that apostle makes a decision, the sent one, and you think it's okay to just buck and say this and say that. Oh, I don't know why I'm going there, but I told y'all tonight I'm going to be, for his men is led by the Romans 8, 14. Spirit of God, they are the what? And I'm a daughter of God, right? He said, you ought not to think of yourself more highly than you ought. In other words, don't, be, don't make people sick. Don't park there. There you go. How do you make people sick? The next one tells you. You have an exaggerated opinion of your own importance. But this is what he says. Rate your ability with sober judgment. Have a sound mind each according to the degree of faith apported by God to him. Did you not think that when he called Apostle Rock, the, the degree of faith that he gave to him is going to be greater than what we have? Now, you might can believe for this, or believe. that's not what I'm talking about. But where do you think it's coming from? The sent one. Where, where do you think it's coming from? You've heard him say time and time again, 
Whatever it is that you need, we've already paid the price for it. That's an apostle. That's a sent one. So yes, you're going to be blessed when you submit. Of course you're going to receive this. Of course you're going to do that. That's what an apostle and a sent one is for, but not for you to just, well, I know more than he do. I went to school. I got, I don't make no difference. He'd been to the school of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. And then nobody, nothing greater, nothing is greater than the Word of God. I don't care where you go to school. I don't care where you're planning to go. I don't care where you're thinking about going. Nothing is greater than the Word of God because God is the supreme being. Amen? He is. He really, really is. And when he sends people, when he appoints and he sends, you know, I was talking to Pastor Milton today, and I said, you know what? When, when this ministry began, which renewed our mind, but I said, we didn't even know why his words were so strong. And how many of you know some people couldn't take it? Because he was never a pastor. He's always been an apostle. He doesn't teach like a pastor. You know, some people, he's controlling. He's not controlling. He's the sent one. You think God controlling? God's the one that sent him. So if you think he controlling, you think God's controlling. Oh, I'm talking, teaching tonight. Y'all need to hear this. You think he can hear from God? Of course he can. Of course he can. Well, he didn't know this. If he needed to know what God would tell him. You guys got to realize, you got to realize, you just got to realize. He says, but to rate his ability, I'm getting back to that, with sober judgment, who you think you are? I said, Moses, they're not coming against you. They're coming against me. He said, don't worry about it, Moses, when they murmured in the wilderness. But he said, don't, don't, don't be concerned. And you know, a similar thing happened. So much stuff was going on in the ministry and attacks coming. And Apostle Rock said, I'm going to walk away. It was just the opposite of Moses. And the Lord said, will you do it for me? He said, of course I will do it for you. And I'm going to still love your people. How many understand the sent one? God is so faithful. God is so awesome. I don't think I'm going to get as nearly as far as I intended to, but I'm going to get where I can. Because if Jesus tarries, there's always the next time, right? He says, the, uh, each according to the degree of faith apportioned by God to him. All of us has been dealt a measure of faith, but everybody's measure is not the same. You don't need the measure of faith that apostle has. You weren't called to what he's called to. So don't try to, you understand what I'm saying? He's, it's right here. He says, each according to the degree of faith, know, know what it is that God has set and called you to do. Know that and be happy in that. Because look at this, the next verse tell, ties it up for us. For as in one physical body, we have many parts organs, members, and all these parts do not have the same function or use. You would agree with that, right? Because how many know you can't live without a heart? And when people have the hearts are weak, guess what? It affects everything else. It affects the other parts of the body. He says, so we, numerous, talking about the body of Christ, numerous as we are, are one body in what? Christ the Messiah. And individually, we are parts one of another, mutually dependent on one another. So it should not concern us because that one can prophesy and that one can do this because all the gifts, it's just like your heart, your lungs, your liver, your kidneys, all your body parts, you need them all. They function totally differently, but yet they're in sync with each other as long if your body is flowing in the way that it needs to flow. But let it get out of sync. Let your hips start hurting and get out of sync. What happens? Let your back be hurting. Your body is out of sync, and so therefore your legs might end up hurting. You get what I'm saying? So they all need to be in sync together. It's no different in the spirit. Amen? It's no different in the body of Christ because we are dependent on one another. Your hip is dependent on your um, leg to get it where it needs to go. Because your hip is here, but this is your leg. 
You, you get where I'm coming from. Because even if you see someone, they have a pros, pros, prosthetic leg, they still is, cook, is hooked to the what? Hip. <laughs> you get what I'm saying. And it says, so we, numerous as we are, again, I read that are one body in Christ the Messiah, and individually we are parts one of another. So you have to think about that and renew your mind and think about that in terms of the body. Mutually dependent on one another. And then here it comes with the gifts, what I was saying before. Having gifts or faculties or talents or qualities that differ according to the grace given us. Everybody doesn't have the same gift. But that doesn't make your gift any better. God gave it to you in proportion to what he called. Remember that up there where it says um, the degree of faith apportioned by God to him. He did the same thing with the gifts. You don't have to be envious of somebody else's gift or jealous of somebody else's gift. You got enough on your plate that you don't need to be looking on nobody else's plate. Eat off your own plate and get full. Amen. Stop looking at what someone else is eating. There you go. I hear you. She said, don't park there. How many of you know people do that? And then you get so full of yourself. I can do that too. I. It's <laughs> so a lot of things that we can do that we shouldn't do. <laughs> he said, having gifts or faculties or talents or qualities that differ according to the grace given us. There are some families that everybody that come out of the family look like they're a preacher. I don't believe God called all of them. It doesn't make no difference what you believe. He called them. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You better renew your mind. Don't park there thinking like that. But then... When someone can sing, well, I know they were going to sing because their mama can sing. And girl, if you ever heard the grandmother, but when it comes to preachers, you can't have them out of the same family. Y'all notice that? Don't park there. <laughs> Having gifts that differ according to the grace given us, let us use them. He whose gift is prophecy, let him prophesy. That don't mean you're saying thou shalt do this. This is talking about edification, exhortation, and what? encouragement. Some people just can encourage you. It don't make no difference how bad your day is going. They can make you feel better. Amen. And how many know we need that? You don't need everybody. Well, you know if you hadn't did this, this wouldn't be happening. You already knew that. That's why you're having a bad day and, and trying to get your praise on. <laughs> Y'all understand what I'm saying? But there's somebody that say, you know what? God loves you. You know, I, I know that you know, but oh, I'm just here to encourage you to keep moving forward, to just have, let the joy of the Lord be your strength. I know that this is happening. I know that it's a result of what you did, but I'm still here to encourage you. Jesus loves you. Get up and keep moving forward. Amen. Yeah, that's a, that's a person that's going to prophesy to you, not telling you thus this says the Lord. They're just encouraging you. And how many of you know that's important? You need to be encouraged, right? And then it says, according to the proportion, it says, he that, um, he that whose gift is prophesy, let him prophesy. But look at this again, according to the proportion of his faith. Some people can prophesy more than others. Some people have a greater gift of encouragement than others. But don't get mad. Well, I encouraged him. I told him. But then that person said, you know, we, we got some stuff in the body that needs to get straight. They, I talked to them about salvation, and they didn't pay no attention to me. And then Teresa prayed with them, and they accepted the Lord. You ought to know, renew your mind. One plant, one water, but God give the increase. It just so happened that you had already said something to them, and then somebody else came along, and Teresa prayed the prayer, but it was God that gave the increase. Amen. Teresa didn't save them. It was God. Amen. The end result, remember he talked, what was it? He says, for the cause. The cause was to get that person born again. It doesn't matter who got them saved, because if you renew your mind, you will know that if you planted a seed, if you said something to them, you're going to get the same reward that Teresa got that prayed for them, because Teresa didn't save them, and neither could you. It was God. And so you won't get mad. I'm not. That's why I don't talk to people, because you talk to them and they won't even accept the Lord. You don't know what is going on in that person's mind. Plant the seed. One plant, one water. But God gives the increase. There are so many things in the church that we need to renew our mind and change the way we think. 
If they didn't, you should be leaving them saying, Lord, they didn't accept the Lord, but I thank you that they're going to come across somebody's path and their hearts going to be tender and they're going to come across other paths. They're going to be replanted over and over. But then what's going to happen is they're going to say, you know what, I'm ready to accept the Lord. And then you don't get mad because you didn't pray the prayer. You jump up and down rejoice. Now, have y'all met people like that? Yes. They get mad. It don't make no difference who gets your child saved. You say you want them saved. It don't make no difference who is the one that God uses because it's God that's doing the work. We need to be aware of that. So keep on telling people about the Lord. Yeah, know no man after the flesh. So if your gift is prophecy, prophesy according to the proportion of your faith. If you, whose gift, he whose gift is practical service, let him give himself to serving. In other words, all I, can, all, they, all I do is clean the bathrooms. I come to the church. Yeah, that's a gift. That is a gift if that's something that you enjoy doing. You, you, you have, because that's the gift that you're going to get rewarded for. You're not going to get rewarded. Well, I think I ought to be out front. I think I ought to be doing this. Somebody's got to be behind the scenes. Everybody can't be out front. You notice there's, in this ministry, there's one sent one, and that's Apostle Rock. I submit to him, and I became an apostle under him. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? Because, you know, he says to me, he says, when I was sent so were you. I've always said that, uh, you know, sometimes people will say, well, you can do this, and why are you not doing this? I'm never going to go above. I, that's just me. Everybody's calling is different. Women can do whatever they want if that's what God called you to. But he didn't call me to go out here and go out there. I'm here to serve my husband, to help him to get the work that the Lord had for him to do. And can I share something with you that I probably have never said to you? You know that I was called into the ministry before my husband. I am so sure beyond the shadow of a doubt that the reason is because we can gel together. Because when you think about it, that's why teamwork helps. Because perhaps if I had not been called, I might would have been like one of those superficial, silly women that didn't, I'm not, that's the end of this. I'm getting a divorce. This is too much for me. But when God knows that he's got a work to be done, you got to have a mind that's going to do the right thing. you got to have that. Other than that, it's not going to work or it's going to be arguments all the time. You come out here with some phony baloney acting like you this and that. We're not actors. We get along. We love one another. We respect each other. We respect the gifts that each other has. You understand what I'm saying? It makes a difference because you see some of them, they stay together, but this one is this way and that one is that way. And it's, you can tell something is not right. I don't know what it is because you got the Holy One, the Holy Ghost, what? Living inside of you. I don't know why I'm going all over there tonight, but it needs to be said. It needs to be heard. Amen? But he says, he whose gift is practical service. In other words, maybe your gift is just doing stuff behind the scenes, whatever it may be. Maybe your gift is not one that's out front like other people's gifts are out front. That's Teresa. Her gift, she is behind the scenes. She's going to get it done behind the scenes, but she don't want to be out front. She's looking for people to, y'all need, can y'all do this? Can you do this? How often, now as long as she's been serving us, how often have you seen her out front on past appreciation? What does she do? Come on, y'all. <laughs> she knows her place. She knows her gifting. She knows what God has called her to. So her gift is just as powerful as your gift because she's encouraging you, come on out there. You come on. That's her gift. But some people just want to be out front. And you're not supposed, everybody can't be out front. You know, there's a saying that used to be too many chiefs. <laughs> Y'all heard it too, huh? <laughs> Too many chiefs and not enough Indians. You don't want everybody telling you what to do. I see that with the Brady Bunch. <laughs> I see that with my grandchildren. You know, Keisha has five children. So do you really think, I know Malachi gets it. He got 
Oh, even me be trying to tell him what to do. <laughs> he got lots of mamas. Malachi, doesn't she, Malachi? Mimi tries to tell him what to do. Why? Because she's a girl. And, but I said that to say this. They don't want, Mimi don't want, um, don't, don't want them telling her what to do. Now, sometimes they do it. Why? Because too many chiefs and not enough Indians. And so you know she got a lot of mothers over there in that corner. You, you guys get the picture. Well, it's the same thing in the church. Because, you know, growing up, your mama, she's trying to tell me what to do. You know, anybody ever heard that? <laughs> she don't, she not my mama. She, don't, she shouldn't be telling me what to do. But if apostle says, I want you to do this, okay, apostle. <laughs> okay, mom. Okay, dad. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? You here, you don't want everybody telling you what to do. Am I correct? No, you don't. Now, you're not in charge. Sometimes people won't even hear what the, I want to speak to the person in charge. <laughs> Don't they do that? And what has to happen? You get to the person in charge so they can be resolved, and then they feel better, like, and look at you like, see? <laughs> so... And then it says, he whose gift is practical is service. Let him give himself to serving. He who teaches to his teaching. You know you're a teacher. Don't try to prophesy. <laughs> teach, because that anointing is needed to teach so that people can get what? Understanding. He who exhorts or encourages to his exhortation. He who cont cont contributes, let him do it in simplicity and liberality. He who gives aid and uh, superintends with zeal and singleness of mind. In other words, I'm going to give to this one, but I'm not giving to that one. I know they got here first, but I'm, I, I just think, you got to do things fair. You got to do things right. You can't, well, you know what? I know that this person is, is prestigious, this person is this, so I'm going you know, James talks about that. So I'm going to put them here. You just sit back there, even though they got here first. Y'all understand what I'm saying? This is all in Romans 12. And all those years, I stopped at Romans 3 and went somewhere else. So that's why tonight when I was reading it today, I said, you know, there's a lot of good stuff in here, that we, places where we can park and not park. It's full of places to park and full of places not to park. And he says, um, he who gives aid and, and superintends sense, oh, no, no, he who does acts of mercy with genuine cheerfulness and joyful eagerness. In other words, don't be phony baloney again. Don't just give because you see someone else doing it, but you know that you're not joy, joyous in doing it. The Bible says God loves a cheerful, giver. a cheerful giver. He said, don't be grudging. Don't, don't do it that way. So if, you know, if, if you're going to be merciful with acts of, he who does acts of mercy with genuine cheerfulness and joyful eagerness, don't give to the person on the side of the road and then fuss. You know, I'm, I, I gave it to them, but I'm tired of seeing them there. You don't have to just turn, keep looking forward. You don't have to give to them if you don't want to. If you're going to give, do it with a genuine cheerfulness and joyful eagerness. If the Holy Spirit doesn't lead my heart to do it, I'm, I just don't look that way. I'm not going to say somebody begging again. Well, so, Somebody's going to stop. He's going to lead somebody. Because they wouldn't be standing in those spots if nobody was giving anything. They'd move to another spot. So you can know that somebody is giving to them, right? It says, look at what the next verse say. Now, you can park here. Let your love be sincere, a real thing. Look at your neighbor say, you can park there. Say, let your love be sincere. Do things with sincerity of heart. Don't, don't, don't just be phony. Don't, don't just do stuff so that people can see you because that's all the reward that you're going to get. When you do things, do it from a genuine heart. And you, you know what? You can do goodness and you're not even thinking about it. I was over at Wise the other week. It's probably been about a month ago. And a little child was in the line and she was, um, she was wanting to purchase something. And her mother said, you only, and she had picked up two or three, two or three candy bars. You know how kids love candy. And your, her mother said, you only have a dollar. You can't get all that cake. You know, candy is expensive now. And she said, you can't get all of that with, um, with a dollar. And it's because a child thinks money is, 
you know, they got a dollar, they got a hundred dollars. You know what I'm saying? And so I said, okay, she can now. So I gave her, I think I gave her five dollars. And I said, she can now. And her mother said, thank you. But I didn't do it because I was expecting her anything except for the child to say what she said, thank you. But the person that was in front of me saw me and he said, that was a really kind thing that you did. And he said, are you gonna pay? He was joking, are you gonna pay for my gross? I said, no, I'm not. I said, no, I'm not, you already got yours. But what I was saying is I was blessed because I wasn't doing that because I wanted to be seen. I did that because it was in my heart because when I can't give, that's what hurts me. And I've been there. When, you know, that's, that's painful to me, to not be able to bless my grandchildren, to not be able to bless you if I need to bless you. That, that is painful to me because I am a giver. I, I will give and I will give and I will give. Why? Because that's one of the gifts that God has placed in me. If I can help you, I'm going to help you. And it's not a matter of whether you deserve it or not. I'm just, I'm not looking at deserving. I didn't deserve Jesus, but he died on the cross for me. So I don't look at it from that standpoint. But he was so fascinated, like, you know, and then and he said, and then something else happened. Oh, I know what it was. It was again. And this person, this guy was in um, line in front of me. And three of his cards had declined. Now I say, now this the money is not there. You know what I'm saying? One maybe, because sometimes, you know, banks can be funny. You can have it there. Have, you know what I'm saying? And, and he did it again. And I said, well, let me help you. Let me see if this will help. You know, think, because I did, you know, and it still didn't work. And I said, you know what? Just go on. I will pay for your grocery. He said, no, you don't have to. I said, go on. I got it. I want to bless you. And he said, you know what? I appreciate that. There are some good people left on the earth. And I thought to myself, there's plenty of good people that's left, left on the earth. You just happen to run across me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You don't take no praise and somebody walk out. Yeah, I'm a good. Yeah, only God is good. <laughs> and we're in him. And so, you, you know, you don't know what you're coming Because you know if someone's cut, pull out three different cards and they all decline. The three is perfect witness. It's a witness. He didn't have the money on the card. He went, he picked up more stuff than what his card would have allowed. You understand where I'm coming from? So you don't, you do that and say, well, he could have been a sinner. Well, that's okay. I'm still paid for his food. Whatever he got. He didn't have no alcoholic beverages. He had food on the counter. And so I said, and he said, there are good people. Like I told him, I said, um, I didn't, I, don't, I didn't say it to him, but I walked out of the store and I said, Lord, there are plenty of good people. He just happened to run into me and I'm one of them. There are plenty of people that are good in God because your goodness, it comes where? From the Lord. Wow, I'm not getting this far. It's just ways of telling you, if, if, somebody, if somebody declined, well, you don't stand there, well, he must don't have no money in his account. After the first time, I knew it was a problem. But then he did it again. And then the third time, I said, well, you must not be pushing something right. Let me help you. And it still declined. And then you could say, well, he ain't had them. He had to put his stuff back. That's why you were in the line behind that person, so that you can be a blessing to them. Amen? Amen. He don't, I don't know. And he said, my name is Rick. And I said, my name is Ella. Be blessed. I wouldn't even know him if I saw him again. I really wouldn't. It wasn't important. It's just blessed to be a blessing no matter what the deal is. We're supposed to be, what, givers. We're supposed to, that's what we're supposed to do. And that was a, there, there's one that says, um, let your love be sincere, a real thing. Hate what is evil. Loathe all ungodliness. Turn in horror from wickedness, but hold fast to that which is good. Love one, this is, I'm gonna stop right here because of the time. Love, I pray you guys are enjoying the truth. Amen, the word. Love one another with what? brotherly affection as members of one family, giving precedence and showing honor to one another. Never lag in zeal and in earnest endeavor. Be aglow and burning with the Spirit. You see it right there? Burn with the Spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoice and exult in hope. Be steadfast and patient in suffering and in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. But this is the one that I wanted to close with. I just realized it, this one. Contribute 
which is what I was doing, contribute, and I know others have done the same thing. I just happen to be the one that's standing up here tonight because I know that you guys bless people as well. I know that. I just happen to be the one to share in, um, with what I did. Contribute to the needs of God's people, sharing in the necessities of the saints, whether he was a saint or ain't. When you see someone that has a need that's in front of you and three strikes, you say, you know what, I can do this. So just go on. Pursue the practice of what? Hospitality. And I'll just read the rest of it for time's sake because you see where you park and where you don't park. Bless those who persecute you, who are cruel in their attitude towards you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those that who rejoice, sharing others' joy, and weep with those who weep, sharing others' griefs. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty. Don't be snobbish, high-minded, exclusive, like you're better than somebody else. But readily adjust yourself to people, things, and give yourselves to humble tasks. Never overestimate yourself or be wise in your own eyes to think that you can't bend down and pick up a piece of paper. To think that you can't do something in the Lord's house. That's not my job. Or wherever you are, you can do this. I'll close with this. Because it's too many, uh, well, you know what, I can repay no one evil for evil, but take thought for what is honest and proper and noble, aiming to be above reproach. Aim to be We just said it Sunday. <laughs> see how quickly we forget. <laughs> but I understand why, because you were looking at the scripture. You see, but you see how our minds are <laughs> aiming to be above reproach. So that means we are aiming to be, you got it, in the sight of everyone. If possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. In other words, he said, I, I don't have nothing to do with what they do, but I know that you should have some self-control. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave the way open for God's wrath for it is written. I'm getting even with him. He said, vengeance is mine. I will repay. I will do it, says the Lord. I will requite evil, says the Lord. But if your enemy is hungry, what? Feed him. If he's thirsty, give him drink. For by so doing, you will heap burning coals upon his head, and you will still be burning. Amen? Amen. Do not let yourself be overcome with, by evil, but overcome, in other words, master evil with good. Amen? Yeah, never think that you're better than somebody else. Never think that you can't do this or you're too good to do this or you're too good to do that. Never overestimate yourself. Another thing that I do when I go to stores, and I don't know if you guys do this or not, but some people just leave the baskets all over the place. You know what I do? I take them where they need to go because I don't want them baskets to hit nobody's car. Come on, ushers. God bless you. Thank you for listening to, to me tonight, and I pray that something was said that will truly bless you. See you the next time. God bless you. Amen. Amen.